Welcome back and this is part two of making this butterfly animation in Blender step by step. If you haven't already seen part one, go ahead and check it out on my channel and then you can continue here with part two and then we'll also finish off with part three. So don't forget that. Let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So in part one, we modeled up to this point over here. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna grab our butterfly. We're just gonna go into our UV editing workspace and make sure you can see your textures with material view, whatever you're using. And just select the different parts and make sure now that the projection is exactly how you want it. So in this case, I can see here, I wanna make a few small changes here. And that's looking about right. Um, not too many adjustments, but just get it to where you feel it looks the way you want it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna select the body of the butterfly. You're gonna go over to your object data properties you're gonna go to your vertex groups and click plus and you're gonna double click and you're gonna call this hair. And you tab into edit mode. And then you're gonna select this bit here at the top, the whole thing. And you're gonna go ahead and assign it to that. And then you're gonna tab back out. You're gonna to go to your particle properties. You're gonna click plus. You're gonna make it hair. And you're gonna bring this hair length way down. Okay, but now it's everywhere. So what you wanna do is you wanna go down to vertex groups Go to density and then change it to hair. And now let's go back up to the emission here. Let's bring the number down to 200. And let's go ahead and bring the hair length down even more. So about that much. And then we're gonna go down to our children. We're gonna make it interpolated. Let's set the render amount to 30 and leave the display amount as 10. We're also just gonna go down to the roughness and we're gonna increase the, the uniformity here and the endpoint. So there you can see. We now have this nice fluffy hair here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to our particles. We're gonna click plus one more time. And we have another particle system. And this one, we're gonna make hair as well. I'm gonna bring the hair length down. And then we're gonna tab back in, select the body part, not the head. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your vertex, object data properties, create another vertex group. And let's just call this hair too. And let's assign the body, tab back out. Let's go to our particles and with the second particle group, let's go all the way down to the bottom and under density, let's choose hair too. And let's make this interpolated and let's go to the emission and under the number, we'll give this 300. And we'll also come here to the render amount under the children and we'll make that 40. And let's go down to the roughness values. We're gonna make the endpoint, give it a bit of value. And let's change the size a little bit and the ununiform, just a little bit. So now it has a fluffy body and it's gonna look a lot more realistic. You can mess around with the length of the hair. But that's all we need to do there. So now what we're gonna do as well, just quickly select the flower hair. Um, what I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit with proportional editing. And go G and move it out, make it a little bit wider. But now you guys can see this is what we have so far. So let's go back into our layout. And let's do a little bit of scene organization. So we're gonna select the back reference as we don't need it anymore. We're gonna press M. We're gonna add it to a new collection and let's call that ref. Go ahead and say, okay. And now we have that ref. Let's just hide that and turn it off in the render. And um, now you can see we have two collections here. So we don't need our reference in the background anymore. And what we can do as well is we can go shift A. We can add in a plane. We can go R, X, nine, zero, press enter. And then we can go G, Y and move it back. And let's go S to scale it up and then S, X and scale it on the X a bit. Now remember in part one, we downloaded the two images. So there's also this one here that once again, it was in part one, if you haven't seen that. So what you're gonna do if you've downloaded that one is you're gonna take this background plane. You're gonna go to your materials tab, click new. You're gonna come to the base color, give it an image texture and you're gonna go open. And then you're gonna get that wherever it is on your computer. Now, if you press Z and you go material preview, you should be able to see that image in the background. Now, let me quickly show you guys something. With my original, I actually went in to the plane and I used the cut tool and I cut out all the leaves and I placed them like this. So I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial because that's a little bit of a workaround, but if you're able to make the butterfly so far, there's definitely no way you can't simply cut out the leaves and make this using that image texture. It's a lot simpler than how we made the butterfly, so um, that's just what I'm showing you here. But for now, for the tutorial sake, we're just gonna keep it as a blank um, 
background here, which will work fine. Just won't be quite as realistic because it just, when we move the camera a little bit, um, we're not gonna really get any sort of movement with these leaves. So um, just keep that in mind. We're just focusing on that. So what we're gonna do now is in the next part, we're gonna be animating this and finishing it off. And that's gonna be a lot simpler than you think. So this was part two and I'll catch you guys in part three.